this festival to do the play that I loved so much, but we were like, I don't think we could do it. <laughs> <laughs> we did it. Yeah. We did it. <laughs> a play festival and I sat right over there in the corner <laughs> and I was amazed and wowed in the fact that uh, Teresa called me up uh, about maybe a year ago to do the first reading. I was very honored and then to be able to be up here with a fine artist. I do have to say before I end up telling you what my perceptions were is we've had the playwrights, the actors, the directors had less than a month really to get what you see tonight on the stage. So let's give them a round of applause. Yeah. And tonight is a celebration of their work. And we have become one huge family when that you see up on the stage, yeah. all these playwrights. that I do when I look at a play is I have to read it aloud and for me I, I did read it aloud I because I was I was kind of in there and when I read it aloud I really get into it and, and things like that so I had to keep quiet and so what I did is I first of all said does it capture the essence can can those words come off of that page and create a visual in my head does it speak truth? Does it speak honesty? Is there a voice there? Um, and I was just blessed to be able, there were tons of submissions, but when, one of the things that you have to look at is, does it have a good, strong beginning, a middle, and an end? And it was hard to make that choice. But um, for me, it's, does the character, do the character or characters jump off the page? And is there something that, as a reader and also as an audience member, is there something that speaks to me um, and speaks to my heart or speaks to the people? And I would just like to say that I wish this was here 10 years ago <laughs> because I think that some of us um, have felt those feelings. And um, many of the shows that we saw tonight and through the process and, and the coming out process and everything, I think it's kind of like, oh my gosh, I wish I was there. But hopefully what the playwrights have done is have, spoke, ha, have spoken to the community their ideas. And hopefully, not saying that there is, but if there's someone who has family members or there's someone who may be like, wait, I need to, I need to take that step, I think these playwrights really have encouraged those the, the people. So I think they said it from their heart, from their soul, from the spirit. And I think that we are very blessed to have Tico in this community. And thank you, thank you, Teresa, for giving new voices and new work to the Dallas community. Misconceptions and perceptions. What did you feel? What were you? What was your thought process as you sat through the shows, particularly those of you who were here for the first time? Any comments? Feedback? Anybody? Yeah. I have a question. Yes. I want to know who is going to continue with the story and yes. progress yeah. the story, continue on. Yeah. Mine is. Um, what I've gotten, I swear to God, every solitary show, groups of people, that's just a slice of a bigger story, right? You pulled it from something, and there is a full-length version, and I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so um, as of last night, I said, um, Teresa, I was speaking to Teresa, I said, Teresa, I've got to make this a full length, because I, I think that this is affirmation from the universe. And you know, the thing was, they wanted to see more of Montre and Jeffrey. So I said, I've got to give more attention to um, them. 
And then I ended it with the hint, hint, Teresa, as I looked yeah. at her stage. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, there's, mine is definitely going to be extended. Yes, right here. Uh, you know what? This is, I guess, a question for the readers. One of the things that a lot of us who've seen these shows a good bit talked about is just how diverse they are, what a draw pastiche of things that are domestic and traditional in the settings to <coughs> things that weren't so much coming of age stories for a young person compared to uh, perhaps an older person living with an internal conflict. And that being said, what I wondered was, was that something y'all were really conscious of when you were thinking about how to put together this whole package? Or I think I think that's a great question. I think that what I loved about it, and was blessed that there were a lot of plays that were like that. I, I thought that, you know, each I think each person comes out at a different time in the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. So you know, some may come out when they're 70, some may come out when they're 15 or 18 or 35 or 40. So I thought it was really interesting to be able to see how those specific age groups relate to either the coming out process or you get what I'm saying? So I, I thought that that was something that th there needed to be all ages and ethnicities mm -hmm. and viewpoints viewpoints and socioeconomic statuses and everything like that. Yes, I think sometimes too, like on, on water, Christopher and I talked because in casting, the decision was, it, the script didn't say how old the characters were. And we saw actors and he and I talked about what do you think about you know, an older guy and a younger guy, and that kind of came also from the casting, which is, that's another thing about the whole process that you sometimes don't know, and sometimes it's very serendipitous, mm -hmm. is that you, mm -hmm. you find something that you might not have known that that was possible. And that's the, that's what I think is so important about this whole process, process mm -hmm. is, as a playwright, in your mind's eye, you know, I write and I'm thinking, oh my God, this is absolutely brilliant. And then, you know, someone reads it and you go, oh, huh, guess that wasn't right. Or, <laughs> 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 and, and, and then the writer comes and goes, no, no, it was good. But my, my point is that that's what's so important about this, is, is everybody working together. Mm -hmm. And it is true. I've, I've been on a couple of these projects and I've worked with several of you and several of you I knew. It's becoming a community. I don't. Want, I will not break into kumbaya, but, <laughs> but I think it's important because you have. It's a safe environment to try. It is. And, it is. and a play does not come to life until it is performed. Right. That's. It, it's like music in that yeah. sense. Right. And having this venue is huge. And having people of the caliber of Jonathan reading these plays, right. and and the spirit and all. I mean, Kevin is a joy. It, it's just been it's just been great. And I mean, I think we we all grow from it. And there's things that we say, oh, this could be better. We could do this. But it's it's an environment that I think is vital for us to grow as artists, and that's very exciting.
and perfect their script. That's what this is for. Because I don't care how many times you read a workshop, workshop or play. Jonathan, you can, you can attest to this. Until you see it on stage, on its feet, you don't know where the holes are. Mm -hmm. So thank you so much for supporting this. And I really appreciate it, guys. So be sure you put September 3rd to the 13th on your calendar for next year. All right. HIV testing, and they do a really great job. So I told them, if I win, you got to slip it.
I am Buster Spiller, and I am the winning playwright of the inaugural Play Pride LGBT Play Competition. I can't even put into words how I'm dumbfounded. I just, I've been in the other new play competition seven times and never won, and won this time with two things that happened. Minimal rehearsals. These guys right here, we only had three full rehearsals that lasted an hour and a half. That's it. But when I cast it and she was pre-cast, the other ones I picked up at auditions, I went for those that were pros that could do it with minimal effort and they completely delivered night after night after night. And it made, it just made me proud. I, um, it's dedicated to my um, Aunt Mary, my late Aunt Mary. Aunt Mary, thank you so much because you gave me a lot of material. I didn't realize what you were doing. Um, and the other critical piece, I can't even think. See, you, I, you put me on the spot. That's all right. How much is that check? How much is that check? Um, the check is for $1,000, and it um, is benefiting my two charities, Living Faith Covenant Church and Abounding Prosperity Incorporated, which um, do outreach to the black community, um, um, Living Faith um, through religion, and Abounding Prosperity through um, health outreach. Okay. And I thank Teresa Walsh. Um, the artistic executive director of Tico for even having the courage to put this um, festival play competition together, the board of directors for supporting her in that, and for all of the audiences that came out. Oh, I remember now the other thing. I did minimal marketing except on Facebook and didn't have a whole lot of people from my camp that came out. So this was actually one that was selected based on the quality of the play. Okay, you want to introduce everyone? Okay, Nadine Marissa as Gladys, Gerald Taylor II as Jeffrey, <laughs> Quentin Davis as Montre, and Jerrica Roy as Mary Meemaw Wilson. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thank you very and much. And it's a wrap. Thank you. It's a wrap.